Hey, good morning. Pete, North Las Vegas. Um, finally got my uh, Aero Precision hand guards in. I went with the Atlas S1s. These are 15 inch. And I got two of them. And now that the hand guards are here, I can finish up uh, putting these two rifles together. Um, so I guess first thing we'll talk about is what came with the hand guards. They give you uh, six. Uh, shims. These are all the same size. They're one thousandth on the thickness. And then uh, here's your attaching hardware. And we'll get into all this a little bit later. They give you a tool for the uh, the attaching hardware. They give you a their special barrel nut wrench. Uh, the barrel nut is seventy seventy five T six aluminum. This has to be timed, which is why we have the shims. Um, because these were all the same size, 1,000th, I went ahead and bought another set of shims from uh, Brownells, and these come in different sizes. So they give you uh, quite a few in 1,000th, they give you a few in 3,000th, and they give you some in 7,000th. So if I have to use more than uh, a couple of these, the idea is to use... Uh, the next size up so that I'm only using one shim that's, that's thicker instead of stacking uh, smaller one thousand shims so um, we'll see how that all works out anyway um, before I get into actually installing the hand guard uh, I need to do some barrel checks and we're going to check head spacing and we're going to check the chamber gauge so here's my go and no go gauges for head spacing and this is my Sheridan Engineering uh, chamber gauge. And this is uh, machined to minimum SAMI specs. So this, what this does is it simulates your, your rifle chamber at minimum specs. And then what I'm gonna do is uh, check the round in the gauge, make sure I got a good round. And then we'll stick that round in these barrels and, and make sure those are good. And the other things that I'm gonna need to check are the, the M4 extension cutouts. Uh, we'll put those in the receivers and make sure that those line up and I don't have any issues that way. And then, uh, like I said, once we get the barrels checked, get all the feed ramps checked, uh, well, we'll start putting this thing together. Okay, so I'm going to headspace um, both my bolts for, for each rifle. So I'm going to headspace one and then swap it over to the other barrel. Just like, why not make sure both bolts are, are going to work in both rifles. Um, so we're going to grab the go gauge first, slide that in there, and then uh, make sure that, so that one passes, and that one passes. Okay, now we're going to do the other barrel. Okay, so both bolts. So far, pass on a go. Now let's make sure they don't pass on a no-go. Okay, no-go. 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 Okay. Um, I'm going to show you something here, and I know I'm going to get some comments about this, but when I head space, I leave the ejector in. Okay, and this kills two birds with one stone. Uh, it makes sure that my ejector doesn't have a problem that's going to prevent head spacing. Now, if I leave the ejector in and I can't head space on the go gauge, then I'm going to take a closer look at the ejectors. And, um, you know, I may pull them out. I may just... Uh, smash them down and make sure they're going flush. Um, in, in either case, if I can't head space with the ejectors installed, then I'll take them out and see if the bolts will head space. And then that way, even though they might go flush with the, uh, the bolt face, I may, you know, they may have some other issue that's, that's causing the rifle not to head space. So like I said, I know I'm gonna get some comments about this, but I've been building rifles for quite some time and there's nothing wrong with doing it this way. Now I will remove the extractor because the extractor can cause issues when you're trying to headspace the bolt. So those do get removed. Okay, so we pass go. 
we did not pass no go so um, we are good on the head spacing so now that just checks the headspace. so now we're going to check the chambers and like i was saying earlier in the video i'm going to use my sheridan uh, chamber gauge that meets minimum sammy specs and make sure i have a good round okay so we're going to put the round in here and i'm checking for headspace on the round and that headspace is good i'm checking to make sure overall length is okay which doesn't matter in this case but i just checking it out and then i'm looking at the, all the dimensions inside the gauge i'm making sure that the shoulder and everything lines up perfectly on the on the uh, chamber gauge and then uh, to make sure that my chambers are okay we're going to slide around in here and i'm going to slightly tap it because if this chamber is too tight that round will get stuck just by me tapping it okay and you can see it popped right out so now i know that the chamber is good on that barrel check this one and the chamber is good on that barrel too okay so i'm satisfied with head spacing i'm satisfied with chamber dimensioning so now i'm going to take these barrels and slide them into the receivers and make sure that these m4 extension uh, feed ramp cutouts line up with with the receivers and then i'm going to swap barrels to the other receiver and, and make sure now we'll get into why i'm doing all this uh, in just a minute okay so if you're familiar with ars a lot of what I talk about in my videos, um, a lot of you guys already know, but I always kind of try to share some information with, with those that might be new to the AR platform, or maybe you're going to do your first build. Um, I'm trying to get this lined up with one hand. It's not doing too good. This is what's called an M4 cut receiver, and you can maybe see these notches. I don't know how well the camera's picking it up, but I'll point at them with the screwdriver, and then uh, we'll pick this thing up and try to get it from a different angle maybe you can see it better um, you should be able to see it right there with the sunlight and you can see those two little cutouts and those are cut to line up with an m4 cut receiver extension on the barrel and you can see the uh, the m4 cuts down here at the bottom and uh, those are supposed to line up with the uh, the receiver cuts so what I'm going to do is pop the barrel into each receiver, then I'm going to swap barrels over to the other receiver. And um, like I was saying in the earlier clip, um, the main reason I'm doing this is to A, make sure that everything is completely interchangeable because what I'm going to try to do is when I put these hand guards on is I'm going to try to swap barrel nuts or swap barrels into the receivers. And um, my goal is to try not to use any shims or the least amount possible so that's why i'm making sure everything is interchangeable first is to try to use the least amount of shims or maybe i get lucky and, and not use any shims so anyway let me pop these barrels into the receivers and we'll we'll check those feed ramps and make sure that they're not hanging up and i'll show you that too okay so you can see the barrel extension and you can see the receiver cutouts they're lining up pretty well um trying to get this at the right angle so you can see it and then what I'm going to do is take a uh, like a, a sharp edge and I'm going to run that over those ramps and make sure that nothing's hanging up, that those are machine cut smooth. And that makes sure that when the round comes in that the, the bullet tip doesn't get hung up on those extensions. So I'll show that real quick. And then I'm going to swap the barrel over to the other receiver, do the same thing, and then I'm going to take my other barrel and check both receivers. And... Uh, then we should be ready to start putting the hand guards on. Okay, so the, the receiver cutouts and the barrel extension cutouts, like I was just showing you, I'm taking a sharp point and I'm making sure that nothing's hanging up on those feed ramps. And I don't know how well the camera's gonna pick that up. So like I said, I'm gonna do this on both barrels, both receivers, and then swap barrels over and make sure all this stuff is, is good. Okay, so I, I got the barrel nuts on. Uh, I just put them on hand tight. Got a little bit of uh, copper anti-seize on there. And I'm just kind of getting an idea of where I'm at. And I can already tell you, just hand tight, that I'm a mile off. 
I mean, you can see the little grooves in the uh, barrel nut. One of those grooves has to line up with the hole in the receiver. And like I said, I know most of you that are familiar with ARs, I'm preaching to the choir here, but this gas tube has to line up with one of those um, notches. And we're just not that close. So, looks like we're going to have to use shims on both of them. And this one's off quite a bit. That one's off the worst. I mean, that, it's already lined up with the hole, but putting any kind of torque or tightening that up at all is, it's going to be way off. <sighs> so, it looks like we're not getting away with, without shims. I'm going to swap the barrel nuts over. And then I'm going to swap the barrels over and see if I can get them any closer. But I, I got a feeling just based on what I'm seeing here, it's both of them are going to have to be shimmed. Okay, I think I got lucky. Um, I swapped barrel nuts over between uh, the different receivers. And now both of them have the notch timed right here on the, on the corner. And both of them landed in almost exactly the same spot. And I got these hand tight. I got them snugged up pretty good. So I got a feeling by the time I get about 30 foot pounds or more on there, um, they're going to time just, just perfectly. If not, at least I'll be using the same same size shim on both of them. So I, I got lucky just swapping the barrel nuts around. So uh, kind of happy about that. Okay, so I got one of them pieced together. And... Aluminum or copper anti-seize, a lot of people use aeroshell, whatever your favorite stuff is, but don't put this together dry. Um, not a good idea. And on the uh, part here that slides into the receiver, I'm putting that on kind of thin. I don't want to put it on too thick and then run into uh, any hydraulicing issues when I go to tighten the, the barrel nut. Same thing on the threads. You don't want to put a crap load on there, but. All right. Okay, nice and tight. And as far as uh, timing goes, we're right back where we were before. So like I was saying in an earlier clip, um, I just got lucky. <laughs> just happened to be building two ARs, was able to swap the barrel nuts around and get them timed to where they're gonna torque even without shims. So I'm pretty happy about all that. Okay, so I'm going to be using the uh, Midwest Industries uh, action rod. And the reason I prefer the Midwest Industries over other manufacturers is because of this. And this slides into the charging handle area of your receiver and helps to immobilize the receiver. Um, I won't mention any names, but there's another well-known uh, company in their more known for triggers than they are anything else, but they, they make a reaction rod that does not have this. And that only immobilizes the barrel and the barrel extension. Um, there's still a possibility as you're torquing this, that it's gonna grab a hold of this receiver and try to turn the receiver and the barrel nut. And the barrel stays stationary, but because this is grabbing a hold of the receiver, you could still break that pin out, that locating pin. And, uh, let me pop this barrel nut off real quick and for those of you that aren't familiar. 
Okay, so there's the barrel locating pin that slides into this slot on the receiver. So, um, let's see if I can do this one-handed. Sorry about the camera work. So that locating pin slides into the receiver, the barrel neck, then goes over the receiver. So like I was saying, um, the, the other manufacturer that, that makes a similar type of rod, he's only immobilizing the barrel. But there's still a possibility that this barrel nut is going to try to rotate this receiver. And in that case, the only thing that holding that receiver uh, index to the barrel is that pin. So you can still possibly damage this receiver unless you also have this section here that locates the receiver. So then the only thing that can turn is, is the barrel net. You have immobilized the barrel and the receiver, not just the barrel. So that's why I prefer the Midwest Industries. So anyway, um, we're going to go get this all together, get this thing in my vise, and torque this down. Okay, I'm out here in a dungeon. Um, I was only able to get to about 20 foot-pounds before I started going past where I needed to go. So I am going to have to shim this after all, but I don't think it's going to take more than one or two thousandths. So I'm going to go back out there and get a couple shims and see what, see what we need. Okay, so I'm going to start off with one. I got a feeling I'm going to need two, but these are really thin. So you got to be kind of, kind of careful. You don't tear them up coming over your barrel. Okay. All right, I'm gonna do this on camera and uh, I'll let you know how it goes. Okay, so two shims got me to about 45 foot-pounds, somewhere between 40 and 45, so that's like perfect. Minimum spec on this uh, barrel nut is 30. And I don't know what the maximum is because Arrow didn't put any instructions in with the hand guards, but I figure 40, 45 is pretty good. Anyway, everything lines up perfect. There's uh, nothing's binding up on the on the gas tube. I mean, I can even kind of go off center a little bit, and everything's fine. So we are there. Okay, so that's one done as far as the barrel nut. Uh, we'll go back out to the patio backyard and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about shimming and I'm going to finish up the other rifle and then we'll put the put the actual handguards on. Okay, so on my rifles um, with the notch right there on the on the very corner of the gas gas tube opening, if it's lining up right there, both of my rifles look like they're going to take well one of them absolutely took two thousands. So I'm, I'm assuming this one's going to be the same. So uh, 2000 shim with the uh, arrow precision indexing sitting right there in a the corner. That'll get you about between 40 and 45 foot pounds with, with that indexing slot centered. <clears throat> okay, so where do you put the shims on a barrel or where can you put shims on a barrel? You can actually put them on either side you can put them on the front end of the barrel where the uh, barrel nut uh, mates up against the uh, the extension or you can put your shim up against the receiver um, if you put your shim up against the receiver you're going to have to put a cut in it because it won't fit over the uh, indexing pin and most people will cut about a sixteenth of an inch 
They won't just cut it, but they'll they'll cut a small gap in it. Okay, so what are some of the pros and cons? Um, I would say if you're just going to go a few thou on this side, uh, you you won't run into any major issues as far as your feed ramps are concerned. Uh, it will not affect head spacing. Head spacing takes place inside the barrel in the chamber, so you don't have to worry about head spacing if you if you put your shim on this side. The only issue you might run into is uh, the feed ramps. Uh, by pushing the barrel out, you're you're getting your barrel extension feed ramps further away from the receiver, and the receiver cuts. Um, if you put your shim on this side, you won't have any issues other than when you go to tighten this barrel nut, there's a slight possibility that, you know, that barrel nut gets a hold of this shim and, and tears it up. But if you're careful and you got plenty of lube, um, that won't be an issue. But you can shim on both sides of the barrel. Either way is okay. My preference is to shim on this side. So anyway, we'll... Uh, We'll go get a couple shims on this and, and torque this one down and then we'll get back to the actual uh, handguard install. Okay, I think we're going to call this good for today. This video is going to be plenty long enough. And then um, probably tomorrow we'll get the, the gas block on, get the gas uh, gas tubes in there and uh, actually put the handguards on. Uh, I just wanted to, I, I forgot to mention while I was doing it, um, I did have these uh, tightened and loosened uh, two or three times trying to figure out you know what size shim I needed so the the threads did get worked or what a lot of people like to call seasoned and then um, on your torque wrench if you if you put your uh, your wrench at a right angle it does not change the torque value if um, all right I don't things on are pretty good if you put your wrench on like this it does change the, the torque value you're you're lengthening the leverage and that, and that will change the reading um, so other than those two things um, yeah I think that's gonna be it for today like I said this, this video is gonna be plenty long enough so I'll probably do the rest of this tomorrow we'll get get the rest of these rifles I'll put back back together okay at the beginning of the video I, I kind of forgot to mention what I was using here so we'll just go over that real quick and then uh, that'll be it um, these are Criterion barrels. They're parkerized. These are what they call their hybrid contour. They're somewhere between like a medium and a, and a heavy barrel. These are chrome lined, hand lapped, wild chambering, one and eight twist. Um, these are aero precision uppers. And the, uh, yeah, so that's it. All right, Pete North Las Vegas, over and out.